It's time to prepare for our first deconstructed print. I've gathered all my tools together. I'm going to use two colors of dye. We have a mixing red and a bright blue. I have an empty container to put the mixed dye in. I have my trusty towel, have my gloves, there they are. And I have a little piece of paper and a cap to rest my squeegee on when I'm not using it. The first step in deconstructed screen printing is to prepare the screen. And the first thing you do to prepare the screen is choose a texture. And by texture, I mean anything with a texture on it that could leave an imprint in the bottom of the screen mesh. For our first deconstructed print, I'd like to honor our ever-present protective gloves. So I'm going to use this glove as a texture and this brown piece of paper. The reason I'm using the craft paper is because once it gets wet, it starts to wrinkle and it'll leave the fine imprint of its wrinkles on the back of the screen. So now we'll set it up for the print. I already outlined the opening of the screen on this paper because I wanted to be sure to get the glove inside the screen frame and not have it outside of part of the print. So I think this is kind of a nice arrangement here. I'll put the screen on top. This is the beginning of what I call the preprint. Now I'm going to put some of the dye in the well. We'll start with the red. Okay, I'm going to put a little row of red dye. And then I'm going to put a row of the blue. These dyes will mix when I start pulling the print. Okay. This is the part I call the preprint. This has nothing to do with traditional screen printing. What I'm trying to do here is get the paper wet so it starts wrinkling and it looks like it is. Let me clean this up a little bit so we can see it. You can see the small wrinkles of the paper here and the outline of the glove. So what I'm going to do is clean this excess dye out from around the image so that it won't mess me up when I do the actual print. After I do that, I'll kind of go over this, make sure I like what it is, and I think I do. I think this is going to look really good. Now we'll pull up the screen. I'm going to remove the paper. Oh, the paper looks good. Let me make a monoprint here. Oh, this looks really good. This also gives us an idea of how well the paper wrinkles are showing on the screen. What we'll do now is dry the screen. I could take this glove off if I wanted to. I'm going to leave it on until the screen is dry. It'll probably take 15 minutes to a couple of hours to dry this screen. I'm going to hit it with the hair dryer to help it out. You could also put it in front of a fan or put it out in the sun. I'll see you later when the screen is dry. Well, the screen is finally dry. This is what we have. Let's remove the glove. This is nice. It's stuck. That means we're going to have a pretty good texture. Now, I might save this glove. Look at how gorgeous this is. I may save this later and put it under a screen die side up so that this color can get on the screen. Right? See, we have a good texture where the glove is and a very subtle texture where the newspaper was. The things that will print first will probably be some of the subtle things happening in here and maybe some of the lines of the glove. We'll see. Yeah, it's very important to have everything completely dry before you print. 
right? I'm going to print with clear release paste. This will wet out the dye in the screen and release it onto the fabric underneath. I also have an empty container to put the dirty release paste in. I call it dirty alginate. It sounds like the same name of a band to me. So, I think we're ready to print. Okay, I'll put a little bit of the release paste up in the well. I'm going to do two squeegee pulls because it usually takes at least two for the screen to wet out. And oh, actually, this looks really good. Normally, on a first print, you don't get quite that much detail. Let's do another one. Because this alginate, this release paste is pretty clean, I'm going to keep using it. This time I'll do just one squeegee pull because I'd like this print to last a little bit longer. Oh yeah, this is going to be a really good series. And I'll do one more right here and then I'll put it on top of our monoprint. I think I need a little bit more release paste. You see, I'm holding my squeegee still about a 45 degree angle. I'm going to do three pulls just to release a little more. Really nice. You can see what's happening. The areas that are white are areas that have a big dye buildup on the screen. So the dye is resisting. It's not getting wet yet, so it's not printing. Let's do one on the monoprint. Even though it's reversed from what the monoprint is, I think it'll be interesting. Oh, yeah. I don't really care whether it looks like a glove or not. What I'm after is a very interesting image and an interesting texture. This print is printing better than a lot of deconstructed prints do. I could probably get three or four more prints out of this. So I'm going to put this part, this little print board down and get another one up here so we can keep printing. Now let's start again. I'll add a little more alginate. Oh yeah, this is gorgeous. Now I could be changing the colors of the release paste that I use as we print. But I want you to see exactly what happens when all the dye releases from the screen. And I don't want to confuse you with colors, especially exciting colors. This is just working beautifully. Now you can see there's not a whole lot of dye left in this part of the glove, but there is in the cuff. So let's print one more time and see what happens there in the cuff area. I'll do a lot of pulls so we can get some of the dye out of that part. Oh, there. This screen could probably print a little bit more because all of the dye from the cuff hasn't released yet. You can see it's still in the screen. But I think this looks good. So I'm going to stop. And um, the next thing we'll do is work with an extruder and the screen.